Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, and you have tuned in to part two of a before and after journey, the after part. We're back with singer, dancer, actor, and new mom, not necessarily in that order, Jackie Sidon. <laughs> Welcome back. How you doing? I'm doing great. You were the first, first, first before and after story that we recorded a before part for. That was exciting. That was fun times. I had no memory then, but uh, hopefully I'll... Do you have a memory now? Yeah, I think it's better. It came back, really? (laughs) Yeah. Not not everybody says it comes back. I can't say it came back in full, but I mean, I'm operating at, you know, probably 60%, which is better than I was. Oh, yeah. You were (laughs) definitely now my 15, 20. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I felt like I had to keep reminding you who you were. That's right. So uh, you had a kid. I did. I'm going to, before we get to your kid, last time you were here, we talked about a lot of fun stuff, and then we also talked about your birth plan. Mm-hmm. And you said, let's not call it a birth plan. Let's call it... Intention. A birth. You do have your memory back. Let's call it a birth intention. <laughs> and um, you said like things like, I don't want to like commit to a certain way. And, That's right. I and, didn't want to emotionally uh, attach to anything. Like mostly you sounded like two things. Two things. Number one, you said, I, I don't really want to throw up because <laughs> it'll ruin my beautiful voice. And also, right? Do you remember, I'm hilarious. You remember well, no. <laughs> a lot of people don't want to throw up. You said, oh, throwing up is awful. I think you didn't want to throw up. You didn't want to poop in front of people. That's right. I was worried about that. And then also you didn't want to be in labor for a long time and then have an emergency cesarean. Right. Uh, did you avoid all three? In that in that way, yes. You did. Okay, great. So mission accomplished. Whatever happened, it was yeah. a success in that, in that way. That's right. Um, so when you were here, you were 34-ish weeks, mm-hmm. and it was all just kind of coming together. You had a doula, and you had a birth intention. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened after that? How did things progress? Well, um, baby daughter did not spin around. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah, everything's okay. <laughs> I just... Baby girl, <laughs> baby girl did not spin around. So she was a frank breach. She had her butt down. Okay. And boy, was she comfortable there. She was comfortable. Oh, down. she wasn't moving. I did it all. Uh, I did. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Because when you came in at like 30, when did you find out? Do you remember when you found out you were breached? breach? Must I think been... she was then, but nobody was concerned because it was early. Right. And I had a feeling. I had a feeling in my gut at 32 weeks when you she was like that. You literally had a feeling in your gut. I literally <laughs> had a feeling in my gut. I knew she was comfy. I could tell because all her hands and her feet were both on the right side of my body. And I always felt them moving there. And it just, she wasn't going anywhere. So I did acupuncture and the moxie and inversions. Okay, let's talk about those art. First of all, did you do, had you done acupuncture before? Yes, I did acupuncture my entire pregnancy. Okay. Had you done acupuncture before pregnancy? Yes, but not too long before. And I had done it years ago. And you like it? I love it. Oh, you do? You get relaxed? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really nice. Of course, I haven't been back since the baby. <laughs> yeah, well, things happen. <laughs> yeah. You go in that cave after the baby I miss comes. it. It's, it was a luxury now, thinking back. Yeah. And then so, and moxie is like, it's sort of like acupuncture, but instead of needling the points, Mm -hmm. you heat them up with this burning herbal stick that smells like marijuana had a baby with sage. That's a very good description. Thank you very much. And it's very close to your toes. So it does get real, real hot. It gets hot. You you could burn yourself if you, or be burned by whoever's helping you with it. I think at one point, and then I did the inversions, some some yogi, I I would, you know, do headstands. But let me tell you something. You did headstands? Yeah. Please tell me you have pictures of that 36-week <laughs> well, I, d- I should have taken a selfie while I was doing it. Yeah. That would be really You're impressive. very talented. I think you could have. I am soups not talented, <laughs> but I was able to do a headstand. Disagree. Um, and I will say this. Uh, at a certain point, I just said to myself, I, I had to stop. I had to just make peace. So I just stopped at one point. I thought, you know what? Baby's happy. This is what it is. For my own... Sanity? Exactly. Yeah. So I ceased to try to turn her. I did not go. What is it called when you go in and the doctor like tries to actually like manually move the baby? That is called the external cephalic version. Yes, I did not do that. It's it's uh, there's no right or wrong answer on that thing. I mean, exactly, it's but... uh, first time moms, I guess, have about a forty to fifty percent chance of success. I didn't love those odds, I'll be honest, for me. And it's pretty intense, and there are some things that could go wrong. There's like, some risks, yeah. There are some risks. They're, they're not that common. 
Um, the only one I've ever seen happen is where labor starts either because – actually, just recently I saw another one. Um, really, either the water can break or contractions can start, and those are the only two things I've ever seen in hundreds and hundreds of versions up until recently. Mm -hmm. And what happened recently is uh, one of our patients was doing a version, and the baby's heart rate dipped, and Oof. it didn't come back immediately, oh. so they just ran into a C-section. Um, you just saying that gave me – Anxiety, yeah, yeah. Really, but your baby's like, out. It doesn't matter. Just you, just in, in sympathy, empathy. Just oh. yeah, she's fine. Her baby's fine, and and you know sometimes it happens when they try to move them, but it, usually it just comes right back. Yeah. And the way she described it, it sounded like her doctor didn't want to wait and see if it was just going to come right back. I, I mean, so that's sounds, fair. So yeah, fair. exactly. Sounds reasonable. Um, and there's you know there's no right or wrong. And those are the those are the things that can happen, and and the placenta can become traumatized. So people oftentimes yeah. don't want to do it. I opted to not, and I just like I said. I said, F it. F it. Let's just roll with what we got. Mm -hmm. um, I might have been open to delivering her that way, but my doctor was not open to that, and I was okay with that. So the drum roll, please. We ended up with a planned C-section. Hey, a planned cesarean birth, So, which was also part of your birth intention. I, that's you, right. I said if I need said. to do that, all I need is a healthy baby. But I will tell you. My heart sank. I was – this is what's crazy about it. I did so much work prepping for labor, okay? I did those weekend workshops with my husband. We did comfort <laughs> measures. I did meetings with my doula. I was going to prenatal yoga, you know, every week doing the – against the wall, this amazing um, teacher, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. She, she – in Studio City, she – will have you basically go against the wall and do a mock birth where you're breathing through and it's this beautiful, incredible female experience with everybody. It's beautiful. And I just did all that prep work. I felt like I was training for a marathon. And they said, oh, no, you're not running this race. Oh, yeah. Here, we're going to give you an Uber. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> oh. By the way, never thought of that metaphor before. Thank you and you much. just... You just brought it home. Well, so thanks. Maybe they'll sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I was disappointed. I'll be um, honest. Well, you also, you had said, like, you described a cesarean as major surgery and said you wanted to try to avoid it if you could. That's right. But that you'd be open to having one if you needed one. And that's that's how it turned out. And, and I think your open birth plan is, you know, one in three babies are born by a cesarean in the United States, and for various different reasons. Right. Some that probably need to, and some that probably don't need to. Some where people just want to. But um, I think everybody sh sort of should do some preparation for what it would be like and be open-minded to it since it happened. Like, if you have six friends and you're all having babies, chances are That's like two of happen. you are going to have a cesarean birth. In our group of 10 friends, our village, that all had babies together, two of us had cesareans. Two out of 10? So, yeah, so yeah. one in five. So there you go. Yeah, you guys are, are less than the odds. It's only 20%. The national average is about 33%. Yeah. And uh, so you didn't like stand up against the wall like No, doing, but like, so I don't have any of those stories, but I do have – stories in that, you know, I was contracting, but I had heard a lot of first time moms, they get contractions, they call the doula, I'm having contractions, you know, and it's usually pre labor. It's never a big deal. It's oh, you're just it's contractions, no big whoop. So I had been having them, went to the movies. My plan cesarean was for week thirty nine, I think. Yeah, that's usually when they do it. And I was tracking ahead five days. So for me, it was pretty much size -wise? just the whole – and not to get real specific, but I sort of know when I conceived and it was a little bit earlier than the way that it's – you know how it's – oh, you the, calculate. They were counting the weeks. They're counting the weeks and I sort of know exactly when it happened. So I was tracking five days ahead and it was five days ahead. Wait, are your cycles not regular? My cycles were so regular that I knew exactly – when basically what I'm trying to say is, see, I know when my husband and I got together. No, no, I know that part. <laughs> I figured that out based on the way you said that. Um, but I'm just saying, so because they either go based on your last menstrual weeks. cycle, right? Or they go based on the when, ultrasound. We went, we went based on the last menstrual cycle, which okay. So now my brain is gonna is. Let me just get it straight. Um, <laughs> which is basically counting two weeks into 
your cycle. Right, because most average, yeah. I'm not going to say most people, but average you have, uh, you ovulate around day 12 to 14, right? right? And so. mine was just a week into that. Oh, you're a super quick ovulator. It was very quick. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. what I learned about myself, and now everyone knows it. Yeah, everyone the knows. The secret is out. No, but I'm it's an not really a secret. Ovulator. It's your personality. You like want <laughs> to do stuff right I'm away. I'm an early ovulator. Yeah. So that's the title of my autobiography, early by ovulator. the way. The Jackie uh, Seiden story. I can't wait to, to read so, it. So basically what I'm trying to say is the planned cesarean was on the 39th week, but really it was just a couple days for when in my mind and like I thought that I was Oh, doing. you're almost like 40 weeks. So, yeah, in my mind. Plus the normal due window is like starts at 37. There you go. So, so basically I went to the hospital and checked in and they put the, the thingy dupe on YouTube. Yeah, the thingy dupe. That's the technical term for And it. I was in labor. Oh, you were. I this was, was uh, how many days before you're scheduled? The, this is my, I'm oh. in, I'm going to the cesarean. So you I go am, for your appointment. Oh, wait, I forgot the best part. Yeah, what happened? My appointment is five o'clock on a Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, so wow. I get that appointment and everyone at the office says, oh, that's bad. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be the last cesarean before Thanksgiving. It's the, the what, staff is thin. They want to go home? Yeah. But, well, Thursday and Friday, they don't schedule any. Yeah. So it's packed on Friday, on Wednesday. Yeah. And there's like less, like there's less people there. So everyone kept saying, oh, that's bad. So this beautiful soul who works for my doctor, she called the hospital every day. Hey, is there an opening? Uh, is there uh, any cancellations? Well, that's Trying all to move they my patient for you. And let me tell you something. That's where we ended up. Five o'clock on Wednesday night, the wow. day before Thanksgiving. So any whoozlebees. So yeah. we show up the day before Thanksgiving, and uh, yeah, I'm in labor, and my contractions are eight minutes apart. Wow. And did I, you know? N- no, because remember, I thought, oh, I'm having contractions. No big deal. It's probably pre stuff. I mm-hmm. didn't take it seriously. I see. And but you're in labor. You're in early labor. You know labor. what I thought when they told me that? What? I was like, oh man, I would have crushed labor. I would have crushed it. I think it. you would have crushed it anyway. I mean, you're the crushing it type. <laughs> I was so bummed. I thought, I'm in labor right now. You're an early ovulator. And, and I'm an early ovulator. Don't worry. It happens to And a lot I of trained girls. for this. It was sad. Yeah. Okay, so. I have a. Uh, wait, I did have a question for you. You didn't get to pick the date then. No. Would you have picked like a specific date if you could have? Oh, Just, like, no, I did calendar? get to pick between the 21st and the 22nd. And I chose the 22nd because I liked 11-22. Oh, that is a really good day. And also, I'll When you say, get old and you can't really remember. I mean, you're already having <laughs> exactly. trouble now. So. It's an easy. It's an, but I also felt it was later is better because it's closer to when her birthday, I don't know, naturally would have been. Oh, yeah. Except it sounds like she came out right on her, I, when her birthday um, would have been I had always anyway. said she's going to come out on Thanksgiving because, you know, Murphy's Law. You but were right. I think I was right. I've been at the hospital on that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. It is a zoo. Let me tell you something. It was nuts, but um, I was with my nurses were amazing. I was with a client trying to do a VBAC. But I'm going to try to do that for the next one. It's yeah. the worst day to try to do a VBAC because the operating room is back to back to back it, to back. And, and that's not – it is the worst day of the year. Yeah. And that's including all the other holidays. And they told me this is bad. But there's nothing you could do. You can't do anything about it. I oh, mean, man. They are back to you back. You should have thought there's about no it when you were, you know, with your husband. You're I, like, wait l- a second. Let me tell you. Yeah. But I guess there's a lot of those Valentine's Day babies or something. I oh, don't know. Is that what it is? is uh, that, it's like a couple weeks later oh, than that. But, nice. um, you know, they wheel you into that operating room. And it feels like you are on a network drama and medical drama. Have you it's, been? No, it's so unnatural. I've no, actually I'm just saying, not done a medical drama. You act, but <laughs> I do. But I haven't done a medical drama, and now I never want to do one ever. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not well, natural you... to be awake in an OR. Oh, that's what it was creepy. It's creepy, and they say to you, "How's your adrenaline?" And as they're asking you, your adrenaline, you notice, is rising, and is your blood is pumping so hard, and you think, "Oh, this is a thing." They're asking me what's going on with my adrenaline. So obviously, this is normal that I feel crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Did you do anything to prepare for cesarean birth? I mean, you said all the things you did to prepare for the labor and vaginal birth. Well, we made a mix. Okay. Once <laughs> you found out you were once having, you a cesarean. Out having a yeah. cesarean baby. Yeah. Well, that was for both. Although we did sort of plan it specifically for the cesarean that we did the um, Lion King. Uh, uh. Oh. 
when she was born just to make the doctors laugh and the uh, and that that was funny i was too drugged to appreciate it but they got a kick out of it um (laughs) are you already drugged by the time you get in there yeah so basically they hook you up to the iv before you go in when you're just in the i don't know what that pre-room it pre-op yeah um i have to say Teresa at cedar sinai is the greatest nurse She's nurse. the greatest nurse. Yeah. She's the greatest nurse on earth. She put in the IV and I did not feel a thing. And that was one of my big fears. Oh, you don't like needles? I don't mind needles, but IV specifically, really? I've had bad IVs. What about blood draws? None of that stuff bothers me. It's so not that different, the oh, blood draws. Oh, it is. The, the back of the hand and the forearm hurts so oh, bad. Oh, the forearm, but there's no I way had to her draw do, your blood. Well, they do in the top of your arm. They normally do it in your hand, and I asked her to it's not do it really in my hand. to do it there. Yeah. yeah, it's rough. Yeah. There's no ushy gushy. So did they I spray the uh, freezy stuff? No, she went in. She had such a good, steady hand. It just felt a little pinch. I was fine. But what I've learned the hard way, actually, is the numbing agent, the um, lidocaine. Yeah. That, I think, takes... A little longer to kick in for me, it turns out. Oh, than other people? Yes, because now I've had three experiences during my pregnancy where I've gotten it. And then when I and then when I had the, for example, when I had the spinal inserted, in, yeah. I felt it. Oh, because they lost. give you lidocaine before they put yes. in the big needle. But yes. you felt the big needle. Same thing with my amnio. I had right. lidocaine and they put the needle in and I they screamed. They did it twice, I remember. And they did it twice. And the second time I didn't feel a thing because right. the lidocaine Nothing had. In. That's right. Interesting. So I felt so the spinal. So you're a quick ovulator but slow with the lidocaine. That's right. Okay, I'm learning. <laughs> you're catching on quick. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, they do the IV and then they wheel you into the OR. You feel nuts and then um they put the spinal that for me hurt but i'm sure if the lidocaine had kicked in it wouldn't have so it's not something anyone should be afraid of yeah um and then is your husband with you at that time he is with me they let him stay with you the whole time they did that's really nice yeah oh it's a zoo in that room just a lot of people you're just not thinking about that because you think of labor as you and the doctor and your doula and your husband this was uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of operating. Oh yeah, there's staff. a lot going on. There's yeah. all sorts of people. Tax and things. Oh yeah, <laughs> somebody just to control the music DJ. So much, and so um, then they, you know, they lay me down and they do the thing where they do a prick test, the pinch test to see if you can feel stuff. Okay, or not. let me tell you something. Let's talk about this. <laughs> They're about to slice you open, and you are awake. Yes. And they're asking you, can you feel this? <laughs> yes. You're like, yeah, I feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Do you feel the pinch or do you feel pressure? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel it. But you're going to feel the pressure. I don't know. I feel it. Oh, my you, God. I never thought about that. Oh, my God. you just talking about it just, now. I feel like, don't, don't call me open. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel it. I, it's, I feel I was, the pressure at the eye doctor, number one and number two. Number one, Like, if I get it wrong, oh, I'll be blind. But you're about, about to, to be and, cut open awake. Thank you. And the spinal thing, I and felt. And it's up to you to tell them yes, whether sir. you're numb enough. Or not. So they're giving me more and more drugs because I am panicked. Oh boy, I never thought about it. And of course, the drugs make you shake. Oh yeah. They, I. Did you get nauseous? I did. Uh, I don't remember. So that must have not been that bad. Probably, but what yeah. I did do was itch. Oh, you were itchy. They made I was very like, itchy. Go, 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 go. just that's yeah. that. Go, go, go. Was a vocal representation of me scratching my face. Um, that actually didn't happen till later. The, the itching didn't kick in until later, but you're shaking. Oh, I have a question for you. I want to take a little break because now it's, I'm very curious. Yeah. You're, you're so descriptive, and, and these details are things that I think people never really think about. That's why I wanted to and, share them because so, I wish I had known. Yeah, that's, that's why I love this for our audience because, look, a lot of people go in with a birth intention like yours. I yeah. want to go all natural and see how far I go or at least vaginal and um, see how far I go. And then they end up having a cesarean for one reason or another. So it's really nice. I think everyone should prepare. I think of that yoga class instead of just Breathe. preparing for – Vaginal would be nice if you can also prepare for cesarean. Like, hey, this is let's yes. do this one class where we just focus and intend. just talk about what to expect. Exactly, because if you know what to expect, it's going to be calming. You know, I did have one friend tell me some things, and that was very helpful. But just to know, okay, you're going to be in an OR, and there's fluorescent lights, and it's intense, and there's at least five people in the room. There's and a lot going on. And you're, uh, I remember, Miss Modest. Oh my God, I'm so modest. You're so modest. You said when you come out of the shower. Yeah, I am. 
tell oh, even though you've been married for a long time. That has been so out the window. Yeah. There's so oh, that's there's what I was more wondering. to the story. Okay. Um, oh, but, we're going to have to save it. I'm going to come back. Yeah, no. I have so much to talk to you about. Okay, let's take a little break. Um, we'll be right back with Jackie Seiden. <laughs> this podcast is a proud member of Parents on Demand, a network of high-quality shows for families just like yours. Download our free network app on Apple and Android and listen to your favorite episodes on the go. Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, and we're back with a fascinating after story with Jackie Seiden, taking us on her journey through her unexpected cesarean breach birth. Okay, so you're you're in the room, and the, we, God, we're in the middle of it. But <laughs> but you're saying like they're pinching you. This is what happens if you're at home listening. They take a prick, the, a prick test. They prick you to see once you're numb, quote unquote, if you can feel the pricking or not. And, and they prick you a lot. And because. You can feel the pressure, but they want to know, okay, you feel the pressure, but do you feel the point? I don't know the difference. I feel it. Please don't cut me open. Yes. Yeah. So that's, yes. Yeah. So just be prepared for that to really know the difference. Yeah. And then so, all right. So eventually. So then they start, you know, the sheets up and then all you feel is some <laughs> tugging. <laughs> the sheets up meaning there's a drape there's in a, front of you. There's a you. sheet you, in front of you so you can't see what's going on. You may see some blood splatter, and that might scare people. But Did you see blood sp- splatter? There's blood on the thing. Oh, it splatters up onto the sheet, a little so bit. you can see it from the other side. A oh, little that's bit. Oh, that's... So, but again, you're so, so okay. Now, let me just say, some people love these drugs and have an amazing, beautiful trip <laughs> during this time, and they're kind of like, yeah, cool. For some reason, I did not. I have very adverse reactions to drugs, typically. And so I was just, I felt, I just had a lot of anxiety. And I just was thinking. Did they give you an anti-anxious drug? No. You and didn't want one? Or you, or the, I was trying to do less, less ty- drugs, drugs as possible. Yeah. So they offered it, but you said no. They did not offer it. They, I, Yeah, they should have just well, offered me a Xanax, which yeah. I've never taken, but probably would have been perfect. And a glass of wine. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you're just feeling the tugging and you're just hanging out. And then... Uh, then you hear it. You hear it. That's probably the same. What do you hear? The baby? The baby cry. So what do you feel, though? I did not feel well, I'll be honest. I felt out of it, and maybe I did feel a little nauseous at the time. Um, when I heard her crying, that all washed away, and I just remember I started crying because it's that. But did you feel the surgery happening? You feel tugging. Pressure tugging and, and tugging, pulling. But no pain. No pain. I did not feel that. Well, I mean, after that prick test, God knows how much. Because <laughs> <laughs> you kept asking for me. I was like, I feel it. I feel it. So, you still feel no pain. <laughs> and then they do prepare you for this. They say, you're not going to get your baby straight away. They're going to put your baby on the warmer while they sew you up. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. It feels like a very long time. And it, it's about 20 minutes. That's a very long time after you hear your baby cry to oh, just yeah. sort of hang out. Well, your instincts are like now. Right. So they do. This is normal. I think it's I know it's protocol at Cedars. They take the baby. The baby, no matter what, goes to the warmer. It doesn't mean anything's wrong with the baby. It's just what happens. Um, if your partner's in the room, your partner will be with the baby and will cut the cord. And you will sit there patiently as they sew you up, double stitch, and just do you try feel and make any of that? Pain. Again, tugging, pulling, and I remember, and this is this is going to be, this is just me getting real, okay, real talk. I remember feeling grateful that they couldn't give me the baby right away no. because I did not feel right, and I didn't feel good, and I wouldn't, it was so overwhelming, the emotions, but also being so high and so, um, there's so many things going on. It was so big that I, I needed those 20 minutes to calm down. And by the time they, and I think it was actually maybe closer to a half hour, by the time they gave me the baby, I was ready, but I needed that time. Mm -hmm. So that is something to to know as well. Mixed emotions there? Because you really wanted the baby, but you really didn't want the baby. I I really wanted her, but I just didn't feel good. I I don't know how to explain. Like I didn't even know if I'd be able to hold her. I was worried I would, she would drop. I didn't have that much command over my limbs. And look, every woman has a different experience when their baby comes out. But 
the one thing I just wanted to stress was there's going to be a waiting period at that moment, and that's something to be prepared for, did whether you, you like it or not. Did, how was your husband during it? A miracle, sobbing. I don't even really know. I couldn't. Basically, I could see them. So they put the baby and your partner right na- on the side. So I there's a picture of me just looking over there crying, and I just was so grateful for him that he was there with her while I was. It's crazy. You know, the whole time I'm thinking because I'm so neurotic, right? I'm thinking I'm open right now. I'm just my 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 your organs are, are just out. out. Yeah. Yes, but you're awake. It's so unnatural. Now they give you the option for a clear drape. <laughs> they really do. So people watch that. Like people choose. Wait, that's not real. No, I'm not even kidding. That's a real option. Oh. So instead of that sheet, be there's a, a clear drape, and and some of our patients have done it already. They I can't say want I wouldn't be to fascinated. see. Well, lucky me, I got a staph infection. Oh, you did? I sure did. I was in the ER a week later. I had no idea. I didn't I, know that. I know my scar is like Night of the Living Dead. Mm. It's all right though. That's one. Of, I mean, that's one of the. Risks. risks of surgery in general. And it's not a big deal. I Can I just say what to look for? How did you know? Yeah. Um, it's red around the incision, which is normal, but you'll notice that it's hot, just like an infection. You know, it's hot. And the redness started to rise at a very alarming rate. Mm. Um, and the swelling. And suddenly I was swelling over the bandages. Did you have fever? I did not have a fever. Luckily, I knew that I had an infection. Well, I didn't know, but I suspected and I called friends and um, a very close friend of mine um, who luckily is a brain surgeon was able to – was looking at pictures and told me to get to the ER immediately. It was a Sunday night. And – oh, can I tell this one story? Sure, whatever you want. (laughs) So I've only had the baby a week. And I'm not a pro at breastfeeding. I'm not a pro at anything. I don't know what I'm doing. But I've also never left my baby. I mean, I was in the hospital for five days. I left the hospital for two days and was back in the ER. So I went to the ER. Without the baby? Without the baby. And I didn't know how long it was going to be. Oh, boy. Because they said, they said, do not bring the baby to the ER, obviously. You don't want to expose an right. infant to what's going on in the ER. Well, I had never pumped I, I, I had been bre- I only had been giving my baby breast milk and I'm in the ER and I get a room and I ask them for a pump. They wheel in a pump and I call my friend, our friend Katie Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> and I FaceTime her and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm losing my mind. And she basically talks me through how to put it together. And I pump for the first time ever in the ER, the tiniest like, oh my little God. half ounce. But I feel so proud. You know, <laughs> you did it. And then my husband was with me. And I said, you bring this back to the baby. And he took that tiny half ounce and brought it home like he was carrying gold. Aww. And he put a little nipple on it. It is gold. It's and he liquid. fed the baby Aww. very, very slowly. And that was... That was our crazy story. Mamas do what they got to do. They got to do what they got to do. And now I know. I'm going to write it down here. Katie Lowe's lactation consultant. <laughs> she she actually mm. is qualified to do On that. On top of all her Linda other... Hanna's taught her everything. Oh, Linda. We have an episode with Linda. Well, Breastfeeding Basics. I mean, she wrote the book. Um, modesty. You said it was uh, <laughs> you're a very modest person. Mm-hmm. But you said childbirth might change that. Did it? Um, not, I mean, only in the way that uh, so many things have happened and f- I've had so many weird things, and I show them to my husband to be inspected, and I'm sending pictures to my dad. De- I mean, all modesty's out the window. Your your father's in the room, and you're and you're uh, you're breastfeeding, and you're just like, Dad, sorry, my boobs are coming <laughs> out. I can't, and you just don't care. And so that has been more people have seen my breasts than in the last you know months of my child's life than my whole life combined. You know, so yeah, I would say that I've. I mean, I've I, the needle has moved a little bit. A little. I mean, Sounds I'm a still lot. super modest, but yeah, it's moved a little. I haven't taken it out in public or anything, but when people but do, all my friends have seen it. It's California. <laughs> yeah, I have a great little apron thing that you put over your. Oh, um, it's the an Hooter apron Hider? with a strap. Hooter header. Is that what it is? You There's just a put lot it over of different ones. You just, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah. My first week in in California, because I'm from New York, where at least when I grew up there, it was people didn't really breastfeed in public. And uh, then when I came here, I was actually online at at a coffee shop, and the person in front of me was breastfeeding. Get it, girl. While she was online, 
And I, I didn't even realize what was happening at first. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I think she's feeding her baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's bold. I actually, I w- I'm not that bold. I wish I were. Um, but, but I am impressed. I didn't even ask her, though. And I have respect. She ordered coffee, and they said, do you want milk with that? I'm like, oh, she seems to have brought her own. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, I have no problem with it. It just was new to me. It's, you know? uh, it's, it's, when you... When you first see it, it can be not jarring, but when you're not used to it, I look pre-baby is so different than it is post-baby. I feel like I joined the club and now I get it. And, you know, you know, every woman has a right to do whatever she feels comfortable doing with her child, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board. Um, what do you, what do you, how was breastfeeding for you? I know that was not the easiest way to learn how to pump, but... Oh. Breastfeeding um, is a dream now, and I thought I wouldn't like it, and I love it. It was There was a hard go of it. I didn't know, again, I didn't know that your nipples have to basically get calloused. I didn't know that— Oh, it's like playing guitar? Yes. Hmm. That it won't, Again, Katie, um, <laughs> we, we have this app, and we would—it's uh, called Marco Polo, and we would Marco Polo back and forth because she's seven weeks ahead of me. Um, so— First, I had the nipple shields and the the breast friend, and I needed all these sort of tools. And then that becomes real cumbersome. I mean, when you're doing feeding the baby every three hours around the clock, it's just to carry all your paraphernalia. Yeah, okay? it's so hard. It's you're just so tired. So, so finally, I put her on the nipple, and it it hurts so bad after a while. And I know not all women go through this, and that's awesome. Some women do not go through this, but for me, it hurt. I couldn't have clothes touched them. The water in the shower, mm-hmm. towel oh, after the shower. Wow. Oh, yeah, no. There's no. Really? For I how would, long did that go on for? Probably six or seven weeks. Oh, wow. And it's I a long would. Time. I know. And I kept thinking, oh, it's, this is going to end, right? And everyone said, no, just hang in there. I would put the. There's silverettes. The huh? The little gel pads? No, that's touching. So I would do the cups where oh. there's cups and your nipples just sort of in there, but not space. touching anything. Yeah. Yes. And that under all my clothes. And I mean, I did that for a while. And do now you they're fine. see them from the outside? Like you have little. The, oh, yeah. I mean, I, lo- I would wear a dress and I have cups. I look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was bananas. If I had to go out in public, I would put the. The, the gel? The. I only did the gels once because you have to peel them off. And for me, that was painful. So oh. I would just do real cushiony. Look, I'm like right now. You guys can't see this, but I'm my reflexive. You're I'm just reflexively your... like pushing against my breast. Yeah. Um, I would. It's do... audio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just a cotton sort of pad. Okay, my wife loved those little gels. She also had a I, you I know, know she was very sore for the first few weeks, but she would put them in the freezer. <laughs> that is so genius. And then she'd put them on. Every Wait, that's time. so smart. Why, why, why didn't you tell me that? I mean, you didn't ask. But you guys then... put it in the freezer. Well, the silverettes. Have you seen those? No. They're little silver, little cup basically that you put right on them. I wore those a lot too, and those would be great cold because it was oh, metal, you... so it just. Oh, they're just naturally cold. They're just yeah, they're cool. Yeah. yeah. She would have to. She would put them on before breastfeeding, so that oh. she was like a little numb for that latch. The latch? Yeah, the latch. With the toe curling. With your actual <laughs> toe. I've never experienced. Your toes just curl instinctively because it hurts so bad. And then that goes away and then it becomes the most beautiful, bonding, lovely. So now no problem for you. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no mm. problem. No more paraphernalia? No more paraphernalia. Mm. Uh, but my friends that are, you know, my f- friends that only use formula were just laughing at me like, you can come to the other side and time. <laughs> you don't need to go through this right now, so... That but was it was important fun. to you. Uh, obviously, it was important to you because you pushed through that. I, mean, I pushed through. It was curling. important to me. Who There's knew? There's no toe curling with the bottle. Toe. I write exactly. Why uh, did you I, think I, you weren't going to like it? Um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 a lot. And nothing is the way I expected it. Everything's different. I'm so in love with her. All I want to do right now is wake, go home, wake her up, and make out with her. Aww. That's all I want to do is make out with her. <laughs> That's so sweet. I'm obsessed. Yeah, you, I, I mean, these little kids come out, they've done nothing to earn it, and you just love them more than you realize you could ever love something. It doesn't even make sense, yeah. It, it, it's it not logical. It's so deep. This it kid hurts. was chewing on your nipples and, <laughs> and, you know, made you come out your oh, belly with a staph my, infection. Oh, my back. Oh, yeah. Your, your back, your belly. I remember you had hemorrhoids at the end of pregnancy. Oh, those hemorrhoids came back with a vengeance. After the birth? Oh, my God. The I mean... Yes. You weren't comfortable anywhere. 
Oh, no. But it was fine. It's it's a whole like part of, you know, everyone's got something. So it was kind of like, oh, this is my thing. You know, well, you these have are a lot my of things. things. <laughs> I guess. I kept just telling myself, oh, I have it easy compared to, you know, this or that. That's so, a nice outlook. Well, I will tell you this. I remember in the hospital when I, when you know, you're first learning to breastfeed and there was one night, you know, it took 45 minutes, couldn't get her to latch. She's screaming, wailing. And I just, I'm stayed calm. Oh, it's okay. My husband's panicking. I'm like, no, no, don't worry. It's all right. Let her cry. We're going to figure it out. And she got on finally. And then I turned my head into my husband's chest and just cried harder than I'd ever cried. Aww. It was like I was holding on to it. And the pain of her crying like that, I just, yeah, it's just you never, that kind of love is, it's painful. It's so deep. It Her pain is just, it made me understand what my mom goes oh, through. God, you're making me cry now. <laughs> Uh, you're 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 so expressive and real that it just it's I can feel what you're talking about. I love you, but oh. I do. I did. I did. I feel like I'm much gentler with my mother now. I understand ah. cle- clearly. That what happened. She, yeah, that happened to me. I, did it? Yeah, I feel bad for some of the things I've done and said. Yeah, you guys, be nice to your moms and dads. Be nice. It, it comes back. To yeah. You. Um, how was your just uh, you? I asked you before when before, when you thought you were going to do a vaginal birth, how you are with pain, and you said, "I don't know." I yeah, uh, I still don't know. Yeah, what about the recovery? I mean, once the drugs wear off. Well, I do think, I in some regard, it depends on the kind of pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a high pain threshold. I didn't like the narcotics. I just took Motrin in the hospital. I was not. I didn't like that other stuff because, like I said, they gave me reactions, and you know, they make you constipated. Yeah. What's that. My First. biggest fear was pooping, so I was like, I have to get off of this. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get, so I just took Motrin. I was up and walking. As everyone said, get up and walk as soon as you can. It hurt. I pushed through. That kind of pain I think I'm okay with. You know, the staph infection, I kind of lived with maybe a little bit longer than I should have. And, and, you know, I looked at my husband and I said, I'm in pain. And, that, and he, he knew. We knew that meant something was going on. So I think that kind of pain I can handle. But then, like, other kind of pain, a paper cut I could be a real baby about. <laughs> we all are. Nerve a, pain. Paper cut is a terrible kind of There's pain. There's certain kind of sharp pains that I'm not – I'm a real baby about. But then the dull, aching <laughs> – I mean, there's, like, a different kind of pain. Sure there are. Um, so I still am curious about birth. What it will be like, what it feels like? Yes, sir. Well, you said if you might try for a VBAC if I you have another baby. I'm going to try for a VBAC. Yeah. I, I don't want to do that again. I mean, I might not have a choice, which, again, then we'll be back where we were, which is, okay, accept, move on. But I think I'm. if I do have a choice, I think I'm going to well, – I know there's risks either way. And benefits either way. And benefits either way. Your, um, your doctor and hospital are very pro-VBAC, so, and breach is not usually a recurring event. Right. Okay. So my doctor was really lovely about about the talking about the V back. He made me feel great about it. Actually. Yeah. It's not. I mean, I have a handful of patients that were breached twice, mm-hmm. but usually not. Yeah. And um, otherwise, you seem like the greatest candidate. I mean, young, strong, healthy. I hope so. Oh, young. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Love, why not? Love that. Thanks. I'll take it. Well, I'm hoping you'll come back on the podcast one day. <laughs> so um, I have a question. Do you, I know you, you sound like you didn't love it, but you did it, and you sound like you didn't want to do it, but you would do it if you had to do it. So that all came out. Do yeah. you feel like sometimes afterwards people feel like it wasn't a birth? Right. I've heard that. It, you know, and I, I think you can't rob women of that. It is a birth. You're still birthing your child. You know, it's just different. Is there anything in retrospect that you, because we have an episode of our podcast called The Gentle Cesarean, but I think we recorded it after you went in. Okay. Is the truth to have your baby. Um, and I'm actually curious for you to listen to it and, and give feedback on. I wish I listened to it before I had my baby. I know. I know. <laughs> that would have been awesome. If I could turn. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, are there things looking back that you would have done differently to make it more of a birth experience? Like we know the baby was in and you got the baby in out. In my control, I don't know what else. You know, I don't look – I mean, look, I would have loved to dim the lights and have, you know, our hotel, our hotel room. I just said our hotel room. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Cedars. 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 <laughs> um, I did put Christmas twinkly lights you did? I'm a Jew, but I love twinkly lights yeah, why not? around the room. And it was very moody. And, you know, a lot of the nurses commented, there's things you can do post-operation. During the operation, I think 
for me, I just connect to music really strongly. So I, I had that. Playing in the room? Yes. They let you play your mix in the room. Yeah. But I will say the one thing I would, which is so funny because I do work on this, but I would work on it specifically for a cesarean is a different kind of breathing method or exercise. You know, we, we do so much for natural birth, the breathing, but for cesarean, you, you, you got to breathe. You you gotta. I mean, I I regret that I didn't just think of that. Then no one just said, Jackie, do your deep breathing. I'm gonna commit right here. Yeah. Based on what you're saying right now, to making like a 30 minute meditation. Oh, that would be for while you're having a cesarean. It would be incredible that you can just. We should do it together. Oh, ooh, do, 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 do. hey. Oh, that's too much responsibility for me. Yeah. I don't want. <laughs> You could take the fall if it's <laughs> uh, no, but isn't that? But don't doesn't that make sense? Because your anxiety and your adrenaline, they look like I said. They ask you how's your adrenaline, which means it's natural and normal that you're about to be operated on. Your baby's coming. There's a lot going on. Oh my god! When my dentist does the cleaning, exactly. I freak out. This is what I'm saying. It's just the cleaning without the drill. That's right. So so if, if I you're just... laying on a table alive and conscious of the fact that you are going to literally be cut open, your yeah. organs take out. I mean, I it, it I makes just me wish anxious just looked, to think about exactly. you doing it. I wish someone had just said, I mean, no, I don't want to say that because everything was perfect the way it was because that's the way it was. You know, that's the story of Pearl. Sure, that's but you, you always learn things when you do them. There's no Correct. test run for having a right. cesarean birth or a vaginal birth. So maybe that's even more important than the music. Maybe. I don't know. Breathing. Well, you got to breathe. And you're a breather. I mean, you're a singer, That's what I'm so, saying. It's yeah. so, it's somewhat ironic. That Did I, your doula come? She did, but she wasn't allowed in the really? operating room. They didn't let her in. Wonder mm-hmm. why. I think just because it was so busy and crazy that day, and oh right, that the they just, Wednesday before things. The Wednesday before things, they were like, "Less people, please." Yeah, moving along. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm she, sure so she, she was with you before and after. She, she definitely would have. She would have. That would have been. A lot of people think there's no role for a doula in a C-section, but it's almost more of a role. Yeah, it's maybe just, she. It's different. You just did this gesture with your hands. It almost looked like. Rubbing someone's head, and I think if someone had just been playing with my hair, it would have made me really. Happy. That's what I would do if I'm a doula at a at a cesarean birth is to help you feel calm and focused and relaxed yeah. and breathing, and just not you know be very conscious of the fact that the that would have been her role literally yeah. from your body into the world and and um, that consciousness is important. A lot of places don't allow it, so the doula can only be with you until you go in, and then right when you come out, yeah. but not while you're having the birth. I hope that changes. And Cedar's actually your house. They, if I had pushed, they would have. I think it was just, you know, I'm such a people pleaser. And so, you and, know, yeah. I just. Was... Oh, so there's hope for us doing this joint uh, meditation. Yeah, like if you it. push me hard enough. Okay, good to, <laughs> hold on, I'm making myself a now. Oh, God. Now. Okay, I have a couple of things uh, before we wrap it but up But it is here. a birth, right? We agree. It is 100% a birth. It counts. There's this moment in the universe where a human baby comes from your body into the world and that is the birth and Amen. you had a birth and That's right. it's just hard to be conscious of it when you're also having surgery and when there's so many people around you and you're drugged yeah. up to the hill yeah exactly so um you have to work harder for that consciousness but right. um, it was definitely a birth i mean you brought a baby through your body yeah one, you hear that you guys it was a birth one one inch <laughs> i brought a baby <laughs> one inch off from from the original target um, yeah <laughs> otherwise very similar um i have a question for you that's been on my mind since i saw you last time okay <clears throat> um you had a dream mm-hmm. about like a blind psychic you had a miscarriage and I did. then um you had a dream about a blind psychic telling you that you she wrote... said to me your baby girl has arrived yeah and that's how i knew i was pregnant and you were pregnant and it was a girl mm-hmm. and, and you... i thought i was having a boy and you had written a song I did. I wrote a song. Yeah. Did I tell you that? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Now that the baby's here, do we get to hear? No? Some of the, you're like shaking no. <laughs> like, don't ask that. <laughs> There's a real piano part to it. It's got a whole thing. Um, I can't get through two words of it without bursting into tears. One word? <laughs> Me on the spot. Uh, uh, I'm so curious. Okay. I, um, I did. Do you want me not to put you on the spot? No, I just, I don't want to say no to you. Also, I can't think of it right now. Did you record it? I have it, like, on my phone that I just sort of fiddled with it at the piano. You want to send me a little clip? Maybe. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Don't. 
let's. We can cut it out. Okay. I'm not yeah, going to put yeah. it. I'm not going to input it. Okay. Because I'll obsess over it. uh okay my do you have any let's see Uh, oh right here's another thing yeah you said that um you're not really the praying type right you like the christmas lights love them uh, but you know jesus was jewish so (laughs) it's all good (laughs) it all makes sense (laughs) yeah Um, full circle but you said that during your pregnancy you started to pray that the baby would be healthy Mm -hmm. i did I forgot about that. I did. And I, this will make me emotional. I, I basically um, said I would give anything. I would trade anything and give anything for her to be healthy. And that means my livelihood, my, I, I even said at one point, if I never am able to sing again, if I, I mean, I would have given anything. And I still feel that way. You know, when you're a new mom, and I'm assuming a new dad too. This weird thing happens where you start imagining horrible things happening to your baby constantly. You're just walking down the stairs and you just imagine the worst. And I was wondering about that. And I actually asked my mother about it. And she said, I think that's normal. Maybe it's an evolutionary way to keep sharp. You know, Mm -hmm. you're always thinking of in those thoughts, there would just never be a moment's hesitation to just give my life for her. So I would do anything for her. I feel the same way. I I, am... I used to obsess about it. Does know. it get better? It, it for me, it got a lot better. Okay, you good. Know. They become a, they, it's exhausting. They become a lot more independent, and yeah. like right now, you're still like the sole source of their existence. Right, right? they're you're so reliant on your for everything. Ev- yes, you're you know? right. I don't know why the baby elephant comes out and like ten minutes later they stand up and walk around. Well, they said that the reason that that. People don't do that because their brains would be too big and they would die and kill their mothers. I don't know, but they figured it out for the elephant. I like, know. The architect. All the other animals. Like, a today, horse gets how they run. How, how much data we can get on a microchip today? It, like, uh, we, yeah, we I know figure, you're right. We can evolve. Oh, we need to evolve. I don't know what it is. But I, I mean, I actually think it's it's more for us than for them. I think mm. we need If they grew up that quickly and they were like out, I think we would just like. Oh, that's interesting. Freak. I and, love this. As it is. Going, I feel like I was looking for strollers, and like just uh, six months later, I was looking at high schools. That's yeah, how that's fast that it feels like it goes. Hundred percent. If they it got up we and just that walked time. off, I'd be like, "Get right back here, you!" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. All we right. need to protect them. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to share before we wrap it up for today? Um, for all the new moms, it doesn't matter how your baby comes. What happens? It's the greatest thing in the world. Mm. Get ready. And don't panic because you guys are going to figure it out together. You don't have to have all the answers day one. You'll figure it out as each day comes. You and the baby will That's figure right. it out together. Yeah, it's all, it's so interesting because um, I always say this when people are panicking about like how to do it's this or how to do that. Yeah. It's so overwhelming. But none of the other animals like read a book, take a class, listen no. to a podcast, watch oh, a documentary. you know what you're doing. It's crazy. That kicks in and it's you just think, wired. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Um, I'm always inspired by you. Likewise. And love spending time with you. And I'm deeply appreciative that you came back and shared that story. I think fun. our listeners are going to get a lot of very valuable information. I did. I hope so. And ple- I, I want to be able to answer questions. I mean, if there's any emails or anything, oh, yeah. feel free to. Shoot an email to info at informedpregnancy.com. We'll pass it along to you. Yeah, Jackie. answer any questions. All right. Thanks a million for being here and thanks for listening. Visit us online for lots more pregnancy and parenting media at informedpregnancy.com. All right, Jackie eventually agreed to share a clip of her song. Listen right before the closing music, and you'll hear some of the song that Jackie wrote for her baby girl. With stars in my eyes, I look out and I wait for you. With the love in my heart, I'm impatiently waiting for you. I am waiting to welcome you home.
I got a hole.